Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode we're going to do some transfers as well as some launches for Duna, but it came to my attention when planning for a training academy launch that we, we really don't have any instructors. And I don't know whether it's because we haven't brought any of these guys back or whether it's because the system that keeps track of this is actually broken because remember I started a series in 0.24 and upgraded to 0.90 so I don't know whether the system is actually working and keeping track of these guys in terms of their their level ups I don't remember if I've brought anybody back it's quite possible I've never brought anybody back from their assignments so we need to bring some people back so that they can train our new Kerbals. And perhaps the wise thing to do would be to bring them back from our moon base, which is really not very useful right now. So we might, we might leave that uncrewed, and that might be the best thing to do. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the situation. Let me uh, start out some transfers, and then we'll see who we can bring back, and uh, try and test whether or not uh, that crew member actually gets uh, a level up from being brought back. Alright, so that's what I'm looking to do. Lots of stuff to do. Let's get to it. Okay, so looking at the timing of everything, it looks like the first thing I really need to do is pick up those Kerbals. So I'm going to send over this uh, CRT on a Strider SL to the surface of the moon. So we're going to land at the lunar base, pick up some Kerbals, and we're going to be remote controlled until we get there so that we can fit three Kerbals in and then uh, once we pick up the Kerbals we'll bring them back and it looks like this is configured so that it'll land directly at the KSC it's got plenty of Delta V for it and apparently it was able to do this despite daily re-entry I hope so we've had daily re-entry in this series from the beginning I don't remember if this was really daily re-entry safe but under the circumstances I guess I'll trust that it is uh, we'll probably have to slow down quite a lot so we'll save a lot of fuel for that but uh, you figure that the launch will take us to orbit. It'll take about 800 meters per second to get over to the moon, 200 to get into orbit, and then, so that's 1,000. Let's say 1,000 to land directly at the moon base. So that's 2,000. 1,000 to get back into orbit and transfer back to Kerbin, so 3,000. And then we'll have about 1,500 left over to uh, make our landing at the KSC. So plenty of fuel to spare, and I'm hoping that'll be enough. Okay, so this is the first launch, and uh, first goal is to bring back some Kerbals so that they can train other Kerbals. Okay, here we go. Thrall is up, SAS is on, and everything looks fine. Well, the rocket looks a little bit weird, but uh-oh, there's a strut hanging out. And that probably shouldn't cause any problems. Now remember, because of, of RAM issues, if I try and take it back into the VAB, I probably will have to restart the game. I'm, I'm trying out uh, OpenGL possibilities. It looks like my video card is now a little bit happier with its latest drivers, so, so it's possible that I can use OpenGL and solve some of my RAM issues, but I am going to have to do some detailed analysis on that to make sure it doesn't mess anything up. Alright, so uh, we'll leave the strut hanging out there. Hopefully it won't cause any other problems. And yep, alright. So as we ascend, we can go through the order of operations. You can see the reason why I'm not launching the Duna missions before this is because we're still six days away from the transfer, and one of the launches will have crew aboard. So trying to launch it right now would not be a good idea because they'll take food, water, and oxygen during that time. Uh, the dread stuff is much later. Everything to do with the moon and Minmus should go first. So probably the next launch will be the training academy once we get crew back. So once we can get the crew back over here and uh, turn them into instructors, we can do the training academy launch. Now it's not my intention to leave the, the base on the moon completely uncrewed. So we will try and send some Kerbals over there, some new Kerbals, using the same system I think. And it's good, because only the second stage is actually expendable. We recover the top and we recover this booster. Clouds. So the problem with OpenGL before was that I couldn't get uh, 
anti-aliasing on when using it. Now with the latest one it seems to have fixed the catalyst control center and so with that fix I can force anti-aliasing to some extent. It's not really good and it could cause problems. But I'll try it anyway and see how stable it is. In that case, I could, I mean, if I can get OpenGL working properly, I could, uh, could do some good things here. It'll take me a lot less time to do stuff, because I don't have to restart as often. And I'll get more done in each episode, which is always my goal. Okay, here we go, just on the SRB. Okay, set. Uh, okay, ignition. As usual, we're going to end up having the SRB land pretty close to the KSC. That's that's the goal hit over there. We just wanted it to get us above the atmosphere. And this can do the rest. It's got plenty of delta V. Yeah, actually it's the low TWR on the SRB stage that actually limits the payload on this. If it was just, uh, it was up to par with this stage, we need a more powerful SRB, but then it wouldn't be modular, which is the purpose of the Strider system. But we could use a more powerful SRB, and then the payload capacity would be much more. I left the docking port on because I thought there would be a possibility that we might want to transfer a crew from the station, possibly with a future launch, not necessarily this one. Okay, coasting to Apoapsis. Uh, I've got to let this stage deorbit. Oh well, we're at 107 by 96. I'm. Yeah, we should probably deorbit this stage. All right. Now, actually, even though I have the docking port on, I don't believe I put the. I do have a, a, just a little bit of mod propellant in that, but I didn't put the mod propellant or the thrusters, so... So yeah, actually a little bit of... I, I took those off to save mass. So bad planning on that part if I really wanted this to dock with something. Okay, well, uh, we can let that go now. Okay, that's good enough. Let's get solar panels out, and as those are deploying, I will plot for the moon. It doesn't particularly matter which way around we go. I've got it on a free return, well, sort of, not really, but uh, going around retrograde around the moon, that'll be fine. Brings this in pretty low. Maybe on the actual burn, I won't actually put it into that orbit, and I'll just have it go prograde around the moon. We'll see. Okay, that should be good enough. Let's go. Okay, well, not quite. Oh heck, let's just uh, go for the retrograde orbit. Okay, that'll do. Okay, and it looks like it'll be inclined at the moon, let's see. Uh, not that much, but enough to cover the landing site, which is all we want. Okay, so now we'll add an alarm for this transfer into Lunar SOI. Wait, where did the, our resupply vessel go? We sent the resupply vessel out. Yeah, it's over here. Let me, let me uh, switch to that. That's gonna arrive first anyway. Let's take care of that. I could have sworn that I had added an alarm for this thing, but apparently not. Okay, well, uh, it is arriving in 4 hours and 43 minutes. That's not that far off from... How is that possible? The CRT is all the way back here. It must be on a very quick trajectory for... This one's be arriving only a few minutes ahead of that one. 
Weird. Okay, but this is still first. Yeah, look at that go. I think we recovered our booster. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, that's a skipper stage. It hasn't uh, mentioned that it recovered our booster. Previously, it used to pop up with that like immediately. Now it, it doesn't have it. Hmm. Okay, now this does have to rendezvous with something. So let me uh, take a look at how we can get into a good orbit for that. Okay, well, it's 2.3 kilometers off, but that'll do the trick. All right, we will do that burn to start off with. Let's add that alarm. Just for you to know, switching from vessel to vessel in space doesn't cause any RAM issues. It's only when I go back to the KSC and go to some building that I get a RAM spike that crashes the game. I think we, we're just going to want to get into orbit. Don't need to do anything fancy just yet. Not until we know where the location is going to end up. The moon is going to rotate relative to us on the way in. And we can see our our target landing location there. Not hard to spot, lots of stuff going on there. Okay, that will do. So taking a look at the situation. Hmm. Unfortunately our peak, if you will, is on the nighttime side. So we're probably gonna have to do some sort of plane change. Let's add a maneuver here. Okay, so in seven minutes we'll do something like that. Costs a bundle. Uh, that's as tight as we can make it and then we'll go right into descent after that. Okay, so let's add that back to the resupply vessel. Okay, here we go for orbit and rendezvous. Let's have the rendezvous information. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, it says three kilometers here. It's not really showing anything particularly good here. I don't know. Uh, we have to take care of this first anyway. Uh, let me create a maneuver so that let's say we do a plane change here that'll be a good thing to retune. Ah, there, there we go, we've got a okay, we can probably do something minor. Okay, going back. Oh, something just flew by real quick. There's another something. Now that's the resupply vessel going the other way. There's another little piece of something there. Oh boy. Should be good enough. Let's see, let's plot for descent into that area. I'll say I want to start that out here. Okay, resupply vessel. Okay, uh, well it's turning around and it changes the closest approach distance, but 1.2 kilometers is fine. Okay, let's uh, make a, a warning point, like uh, a bit before that. That'll do. Okay. We should be able to make the landing now. Okay, here we go, and I could probably do the retro burn now. After Cripple Joint Reinforcement. I can't target something on the ground because that does produce some glitching. Just gonna have to read it out. Looks like we should tilt a little bit north as we retro burn here. Oh, well, there it is. All right.
We've got a lot of thrust here. I don't need to rush. Let's get landing gear down. Okay. I think we can go straight down more or less. It's actually a little bit hard to control this right now. You'd think with the delay it'd be easier, but it's a little bit jarring. Probably shouldn't be too bothered getting too close. After all, the Kerbals can move. It's not like I'm attaching this to the base. Okay, it's a little bit far from the base, but again, I think they can uh, get on over here easily enough, and this is probably safer anyway. It's actually a good look at the base. Okay. Looks like we're good. Alright. So this is on the ground and let's, I don't know, uh, I don't know, do we have a good mix of people, you know, pilot, scientist, engineer, let me go back, no, oh, going back is probably a good, bad idea, but um, yeah, I think I need to go back and see who's actually at the Kerbatat to plan who to bring out to here. Okay, so the game crashed there and I decided that I would make an impromptu OpenGL test. Remember how I said I'd wait and do some side testing? Well, uh, now's a good, as good a time as ever. But to my dismay, it really hasn't cut down on the memory usage very much. There must be some mod in particular that doesn't bother to react with OpenGL. Because right now it's, go, uh, it's at uh, 2.96 gigabytes of RAM already. I just restarted it. So it doesn't really help. That is very odd, because in other installs, of course, I know that helps quite a lot. Hmm, this is very weird. Anyway, we're in OpenGL with with uh, forced anti-aliasing, and let me check the astronaut complex. So, if we take a look at who's in the Kerbatat, uh, Jorvi is an engineer, John Gas is a scientist. I want one of each, so um, is there a pilot available there? It doesn't look like it. We'll have a Podzer, a pilot, coming in on the Explorer X, but that'll be in a while. So I guess we'll transfer John Gas, Jorvi, and uh, Mike. Mike's been there for a while. And uh, our, our, our initial training will be for scientists and engineers with a focus on well, we, we actually need a lot of engineers, don't we? We're, we're, we're actually more engineer interested than scientist in interested, I think. Forget which is better with the with the conversion modules. I mean, you know, like the refinery. Probably we want more engineers. John Gas, Jorvi, and Samden, then. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I think uh, not everything has kicked in as far as physics. Let's get rid of alarm clock. We can clear some of this stuff up. Surface info. All right. Our vessel is over there, right there. And so yeah, John Gas EVA. Just plop down, why don't you? Or we could get your jetpack going. Yep. Okay, you can just hop right over everything. Place this away. And forward. Now I have to remember, because we've got a lot of lag going on here, 
that uh, he's probably going a lot faster than it seems. So I gotta watch out for that. Okay, all lined up. Just hope uh, everything is all right as far as this approach. Don't want to knock anything over or anything. Use a lot of EVA propellant to get here. Okay, grab. And board. Okay, one in, two to go. Jorvi. And then Sam then, okay. It's worth pointing out that we brought these Kerbals over before they had actual roles, you know, before there were pilots, engineers, and scientists. So I sort of stocked up the base without any regard to that. And so part of the reason we've got the imbalance that we've got at the base. Not that we need a whole lot of pilots sitting around, mind you, but you know, uh, that we have had rovers on the moon. And those probably the pilots would have taken care of that. Okay, grab. Board. And Jorvi is in. And now for the last one. Looks like Sam Dunn let uh, leapfrogged over Mike here in the listing. Anticipating this need to leave. So that leaves two, two Kerbals in the base, Mike and Desric. Hope they get along well. Uh, probably better to get uh, Sam Dunn out anyway. He was in the power distribution unit, which as you can see from that little radiation symbol, is a reactor. So. Yeah, probably good to have him be shorter on his stay than the other Kerbals. Okay, brought this one in much faster than the previous ones. Let's see if I can avoid messing this up. Okay, grab. Oop, oop and board. Alright, they're all in. Let's not waste any time. After all, we've got the resupply mission aimed for an hour and 60 minutes. That's plenty of time to get these guys back into orbit and probably on their transfer back. So, let's go! In case you're wondering about their their life support in here, they've got 26 days worth, more than enough to get back home. Well, let's just coast to Wapwapsis and then round it out. This is very powerful. After all, this is meant to create a soft touchdown on Kerbin way overpowered for the moon. Okay, here we go for orbit. Okay, that will do. Let's plot for home. We could get into orbit around Kerbin first and then try and descend to the KSC. It's probably overkill. Let me let me make a looser orbit though. Um, thirty-five kilometers sounds fine. We've got plenty of food, so if they have to go around, that's fine too. So that'll just reduce our our orbit instead of bringing us all the way down. Hopefully. While I think that this can withstand a re-entry heat from descent from low Kerbin orbit, I don't know if it can withstand a re-entry heat coming all the way back from the moon, so probably best not to push it. Okay, that'll do. 36. That's what I want. Okay. 
Moon escapes in a little while. Um, why don't I add a maneuver like right there? That's probably the best place. So a null maneuver and about six hours. Okay, let's turn to the resupply mission. Okay, let me get rid of this alarm and that maneuver. That was just a placeholder. And let us rendezvous with the station. So that we can stop getting these messages, at least the ones about Mooner Station 1. We're going to have to expend this stage and then probably flip around to use the next stage. Render range. Okay. Nope, the LV-99 really is that slow. Darn it. Okay, stage set. And we have to control from here. So that flips it around. Where did the target go? Up there. Okay, so we're aiming at the port opposite the half moon, and so we're just bringing it in on RCS, focused on this docking port now. So we can't use the main engines right now, but that should be fine. So I'm cancel out, canceling out the velocity there. Okay, this axis looks pretty good. Okay, closest approach distance, about a meter or two. Could get closer. Okay, here we go, under 12 meters. Let's get the RCS back on and slow down a bit. Correct our trajectory. A little bit off. Uh, okay, hmm, got it, okay. Magnetism is good. SAS knocking that port around. But. Okay. Alright, so. Docking is good. We've got solar panels still out. So that probably helps the station a little bit. Alright, so how long does Pepe Kerman have now? Oh, 2,400 and. Uh, 2,144 days, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be good enough for now. Yep, no worries on supplies. Very good. Now, the next thing is obviously bringing the CRT and with, uh, well, just the CRT with the three Kerbals in back home. Well, I guess that's the thing to do. I'll conclude the episode with that. Okay, we can get rid of the temporary alarm. Mooner Station 1 has been resupplied, so we can get rid of that alarm and that false maneuver node. Okay, out to Kerbin SOI. 35 kilometers should still be alright. Right guys? Should be alright? Maybe? Let's go home. Mild inclination, so that's that's positive. Oh, there's the KSC right there. Hmm. <laughs> Could use a thousand two hundred twenty nine to really slow down and try and get right over it. No, I don't think that's the best idea. I guess with ambient light adjustment, uh, landing on the nighttime side isn't the worst thing. Yeah, wow, right in line. But we're gonna get some data on reentry right now, so important information. Let's move... okay so the fuel is all the way down. Okay that's good. Always important to have that center of mass low. Okay we're getting some heat effects. We are slowing down. Seems to be catching on those solar panels somewhat. Those are getting hot. 30, 330 there. Thrust plate multi adapter around 300s. The engine's at 400 now. 
400. Still descending pretty quickly. Five hundred batteries, five fifty. Six hundred. Okay, something exploded. Kerbals are still alive. I think it was the landing legs. So we are now aiming for the ocean. <laughs> Yep, we are now going to splash down rather than land. Temperature still increasing on the battery packs, approaching 800 degrees Celsius. That's 800. 900 on the thrust plate multi adapter. 900 on the engines at the bottom. Thrust plate multi adapter seems to be the hottest. 950, 985, and increasing still, but not as much as before. Wow, this altitude looks like it might have, might be enough to bring us all the way down. I thought this wasn't enough to bring us all the way down. Turns out it is. Well, the more you know. Thrust plate multi adapter at. 980 and decreasing. There's a bit of land there. That's the peninsula, isn't it? Yeah, that's the peninsula to the east. Really don't want to touch down on land right now. Can we hop over it? We might. We might go over it. might. I don't know. Well, landing legs, so uh, if you come back on the direct descent, I guess we'll have to aim like 40 kilometers or higher when coming back from the moon to avoid the landing struts to uh, landing struts exploding on us. Well, sorry guys, not the triumphant return to the KSC I would have hoped for, but as long as you guys survive, I guess that's the biggest plus. Okay, still looking like we're gonna hit the water on the opposite side there. Well, we didn't have to use our Delta V very much since uh, things didn't go as planned. Descending below the clouds now. We don't need Smart ASS on, I don't think. Okay, I think we're good for parachute deployment. Yep. Please work. Okay. This is probably gonna flop in the water once we get down. Okay, parachute deployment. And that brings us to 6 meters per second. We'll use the engines to actually. I should just shut off some engines. Let me shut off one pair and see how that works out for us. 3 meters per second sounds good. Well, let's just recover before it flops. No point risking anything. Okay, so the game crashed right there and we are no longer in OpenGL mode since it doesn't seem to have much benefit here. It's probably a particular mod and I'm suspicious of the colonization mods. I have tested OpenGL out in many other installs and it works wonders to reduce RAM usage there, but it doesn't seem to do it with this install. Okay, let me recover and nobody's more perplexed than I am. Okay, here we go. Let's see if our Kerbals got... Yes, they've got experience, but they only advanced to level 1. They're not going to be very good instructors. Huh. Well, I guess it's better than anybody else we've got. I mean, everybody else is on level 0. Okay, well, uh, so next time we are going to do all the Duna stuff. I already built all the craft for the Duna launches. I was planning on doing it this time, but I got sidetracked with the whole idea of training new crew, and we brought those guys back, and it turns out 
not quite the best um, instructor material but anyway we'll do do what we can and next time I'll do all the launches I had originally planned for this time and uh, we have that transfer window right there all right so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this episode please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time